me just type in, I can hear you in the questions box, um, just to give us a final check that everything is working correctly. Okay. So, just starting off with the agenda for today's session. We'll start off obviously with uh, just an introduction as to what exactly the uh, our tax to uh, XPA integration feature is. Uh, we'll go over the prerequisites to run the XPA tax integration feature. We'll then go through a demonstration of how the integration works. We'll also go through what configuration changes need to be made and we'll wrap up with an end user checklist um, as well as some hints and tips at the end. Just to note that this session is intended for the end users who prepare financial information within XPA and the associated tax return and uh, also details how to apply these practice level changes down to the client ledger level and then pull the data into XPA. So firstly, uh, what exactly does the XPA to tax integration feature do? What the feature does is it pulls general ledger balances from within your XPA ledger into an associated advanced tax return to create and populate the business income worksheets and other key financial data. The sections of the business income worksheet which are populated include trading uh, account, non-primary production, livestock, primary production income, general profit and loss income, general profit and loss expenses, and key financial balance sheet information. The process utilises a mapping between your XPA master chart of accounts and the various labels within the business income worksheet inside the return. This mapping is performed from within XPA and is called a tag set. The tag set mapping provided to you by Reckon is based on our standard master chart of accounts. The tag set can be adjusted at a template level by your practice XPA application administrator to allow for any personalisation which may have been made to the XPA master chart. Once all adjustments have been performed, the tag set is then able to be applied to each of your client ledgers where it can then be adjusted further to suit the specific client before performing the import into the associated advanced tax return. The prerequisites for uh, uh, using the XPA to tax integration feature are advanced tax 2014.4 Point zero or above, advanced tax XPA 9.3 or above, advanced, tax, advanced XPA master chart AIFRS.XPA template which was released in August 2014 or later. And from an end user point of view, tag sets need to be applied to the XPA templates which we'll go through. Joe admin rights need to be updated to allow users to perform tag set maintenance and your XPA ledgers need to be linked to the client console. Now the reason why we need the 2014 master chart template is because this is the first template that actually has the Oztax tag sets added in and so this is, uh, and the feature will only work with the Oztax tag set. So we'll start off with a demonstration of what the end user sees with the XPA tax integration module. Now what we'll do is that we'll do this sort of in reverse where we'll look at the tax return first. Now what you'll notice as we are running advanced tax here is that there is a button in the top toolbar that says XPA imports. What we'll do is that we'll click our XPA import button and select ABC company. We are then asked, you are about to import XPA information into a new business income worksheet, do you wish to continue? And our answer to that will be yes.
Once the import is complete, you can see we've, our business activity schedule has been completed. Running through advanced tax, we can see that the different balances from XPA have been imported with an XPA bubble notating that the data has come in, in fact from the XPA ledger. You will see that this also includes income tax rec amounts as well as balance sheets. Now, where this has come from is the linked XPA ledger. So now looking at our client console at ABC Company, we can see that our XPA file is there. Now what you'll note is that there are three different XPA files and they're there for a reason. The tax return that we're looking at is a 2014 tax return. You have noticed that when we hit the XPA button, only one file turned up and that was ABC code PTY Limited. That is the only file which has a 2014 year end date. So what we'll see here is that only files, only XPA files that have the same year end date as the tax return being worked on can be imported into that tax return. So you need to be working in your current year. To show you where that data came from in XPA, for those of you who wonder why this might look a bit different from what you're used to, this is XPA version 10. And we can see we have our sales of 113,636 which will correlate to our trading income of 113,636. Now we mentioned before that the way that the integration feature works is using tag sets. Where it is found is if we go chart, tag sets, you will see there is an option called AusTax. All these tax sets relate to information that can be imported into advanced tax. And selecting a tax set will show you what, is, what accounts make up that tag set. You can also review the information that is going to be imported into advanced tax by applying a filter to your trial balance. In this situation, we would generate the trial balance, select options, show tag set, select subtotal and group by tag set. And you can now see that the accounts have been separated into their relevant tag sets and these tag sets will correspond to the values that are imported into tax. Now, should you change any data in XPA, that data can be updated in advance. Say that we have changed our XPA file and want to refresh. We will hit the XPA button again and hit OK. Now, the system will then ask us a question. Do we want to update the business income schedule 1, which is the schedule that was already completed, or do we want to complete a new worksheet? Now the reason why we have this option is there are some clients that may have multiple XPA ledgers for different businesses, but for reporting purposes, report everything into one tax return. If you have this situation, you could choose new worksheet and apply an import, or rather, the different business income worksheets. In the situation that we are talking about, being purely to update information, we'll select business one again, hit OK 
and confirm that we are going to overwrite the information for worksheet one. It's important to note at this point that none of the updates are automatic. Okay? So what you need to do is you need to make any changes that you need to make in XPA and then hit the import button again in tax. From a configuration point of view, we need to check a few of the following. Firstly, you need to review your job admin settings. What's relevant in this situation is that we will want to review Joe Admin to see that our users have the ability to update tag sets and to edit tag sets as required. Under here we'll see Exceed Professional Accounting, XPA and Tag Sets. We have the option of Tag Set Creation, Copying, Editing, Maintenance and Deletion need to make sure that these options are available for our staff so that they can edit the tag sets as required to uh, prepare your file for uh, data imports. We then need to review the tag sets uh, in XPA to apply any changes to the mappings and master templates. So firstly, what you'll need to do is actually update your ledgers to include the new tag set. The way that works is we'll go back into our XPA file. Chart tag sets. And we have the option here when we want to edit our tag sets to drag any available accounts into different tag sets. So while we have to keep the Oztax Oz tag sets the same, we can change the accounts that are in there. We can move them between tag sets. So if, for example, you have an account that should be in the general P&L rather than trading, we can move from one to the other. To apply Oztax tag sets to a file, we'll create a new tag set. My apologies, no, we'll copy a new tag set. We'll select the source for the tag set. Now the source will be firstly the XPA file. That will be our master chart. So we'll select our updated master chart. Select the tag set that we want to copy in and give it a name. This needs to be applied to any existing XPA files that you wish to use the integration feature for. Once you've copied this tag set across your templates, however, any new files created on those templates will have the tag sets automatically applied. The process for updating a template's tag sets are much the same. Instead of opening a file, we'll open a template, go to tag sets, hit copy and refresh from the master chart. From this point on any file that we create using the trust template file will have the Oztax tag sets applied. I also mentioned previously the custom filters that can be applied in trial balances. As you'll recall, our tag set, our trial balance here has been separated by using the tag set feature. We can also apply other filters using the filters button. We can ask the, the uh, program to exclude any accounts not in a tag set. So you'll see here we have some items that are not in the tag set. 
while we want to be able to see those from uh, the point of view of reviewing the accounts in order to review what has been imported into each of the um, tag sets in tax, we can apply the filters and exclude accounts not in tag set. We can also change the tag set that can be filtered. AusTax is the only one that is relevant for your expiator tax integration, but for your reference there is also a tag set called chart sections, which mirrors the uh, tag sets or the, the categories that we use in our financial reports. These tag sets were generated for benchmarking purposes, however we found that clients also find these useful from a review point of view. It's also important for XPA files to be linked to specific clients and matters. You'll see from our central console that the XPA ledger is already linked. If we want to link an XPA ledger to this client, we'll go into our central console again, hit edit mode, right click in the space and select link a file to this client. Our normal XPA box will come up and allow us to link any of these files. So now we'll go through the end user checklist that each user should follow when they are performing a XPA tax integration. The first step is to standardise your client chart. Now tag sets are, our tag sets have been generated using the standard chart of accounts and we expect that certain account codes will sit in certain places. Obviously with any uh, customizations that you may have, your chart may not match up, um, may not match up. Now, ideally we would have all our uh, client charts, whether they're standard or not, we would expect them to be consistent across the client base. What this means is that if your clients are using a consistent chart, you can edit your tag sets once and then um, apply the one tag set across all of your client accounts. Secondly, you need to check that your Oztax tag set has been copied over from the XPA master template. We covered this previously. Once the tag set has been copied over, you will need to review and update your tag set mapping. So once you've actually applied your tag set, we would generate this report in XPA that we looked at before, which showed your trial balance filtered by tag set, and we would look for any accounts that are in a no tag set option. These may be needed for your tax return, and so we want to make sure that anything that was listed under no tag set is reallocated to its proper tag set. Next, we would review the file link to the client and matter. So what that means is that we want to make sure that our XPA ledger is linked to our client in Central Console as shown. As we've seen, only files that are in the same year as the income tax return being worked on can be imported. So if you're working on a next year's file, you need to roll that file forward and have the year being worked on as your current year, so not in year two, in order to make the integration work. Likewise, you cannot open a prior year tax return and pull data out of that XPA file. It needs to be in the current year. And finally, we'll import data into advanced tax. And that is just using the XPA button that we hit before. Now, before we move on to some hints, tips and traps, I'll start going through some questions.
Now, one question we have here is, do you have to add or apply the tag set manually to existing clients, or can this be done in bulk? Uh, the answer there is that we need to apply it to each client. So, it would it probably the best way to do it would be as part of your year-end process. So, as your juniors are preparing this year's tax returns or this year's financials, part of their process is to copy the tag set mapping over um, and check the mapping to make sure that it is ready to go. Uh, another question here is, uh, what? Okay, what sync? Okay. What does the sync box do if it's ticked? So the sync box uh, just for some clarification, I believe we're referring to the synchronized box here in um, advanced tax. This does not relate to the um, XPA ledger. Another question here is are there any plans for this to work on BAS? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not sure if we can uh, speak to our tech guys and confirm if that if we are planning to have that in the basses in the future. Next question is: Have we developed a set of instructions for doing this that's available as a manual? Um, I'm not sure at the moment. We are recording these sessions for use, um, but we can um, make some content available for you if you want to um, have a paper version of these instructions. Hi John, it's Tanya here. Hi Tanya. The, um, the end user guide and the configuration guide that came out with the tax release, so that will be distributed along with the webinar and the slides from today's slide within the next 24 hours to everyone, um, so that you have Fantastic. access to that. Fantastic. Okay, our next question, if tag sets are applied to the template, does this come across to the ledgers? That's the case for any new ledgers that you create from that template. So any existing ledgers will have to have the tag sets applied, but if you uh, create new ledgers off the template that has had the tag sets updated, then those tag sets will come across to any new files. Uh, the next question, if rental schedule will pull through sub-accounts. Um, now, the answer, uh, as we covered earlier, at the moment we are only importing the business income schedule. We are not um, able to import rental details at the moment. That's something that we have uh, noted for a future release. Another question here, if we have more than one trading account, uh, i.e. divisions, um, is it possible to pull those in? And as Tanya's just organised, uh, just replied rather, um, that comes under the same thing, same category as rentals. Um, at the moment we can't um, apply divisional data, we can't separate um, out divisional businesses. Uh, another question here, will it be possible to make changes to the individual items that have been imported? For example, uh, a change made to one number. So basically, um, what we'll do is at any time that we make a change to the XPA ledger, we will hit the XPA update um, and that will pull in all, all, it basically brings all the figures in again. Okay, so you can't say only import this specific account, but what it does is it pulls in all the updated balances. So if you have changed an individual um, account, then that can be pulled in. Now, also, if you want to make changes to the ex imported figures, you can do so. Um, obviously, we don't recommend that as a general rule, given that we are, sh are showing things as being imported. But yes, you can make changes to the numbers once they have been imported. So if we go here to tax, these numbers are still edit editable. What happens as soon as you edit them is that the XPA bubble, so if we change here from 70 
to 75,000. We'll see the XPA bubble next to it, which indicated that it is um, that indicated that it was pulled in from XPA is no longer there. Uh, we just had a question in relation to the synchronization. Uh, we we're referring to synchronization from the XPA ledgers. Um, I can't answer that one at the moment. I know that at the moment it does not relate to the um, XPA to tax integration feature, however. Okay, moving on for the moment to our hints, tips and traps. So this is just a few things that we've noted um, while we've been uh, preparing these integrations. Firstly, it's important to note that integration only applies to tax returns from the 2013 year onwards. Okay, these, uh, we can only apply this to basically 2013 tax returns and onwards. So if you have a client that is preparing a 2012 tax return or earlier tax return, they cannot use the data import feature. The second tip is to ensure that your Joe rights have been correctly configured. We need to make sure that our users do have access to the tag sets and can edit them and maintain them if necessary. Um, if that's not the case, they won't be able to apply the tag sets to the files or edit them properly and so you won't get useful data brought in. The next tip is to ensure that your XPA file is rolled forward to the correct year. Now, as we noted before, it's important that the XPA file is in the current year, in the same current year as the tax return. Okay, we can't even if we have two years of data in an XPA file, it is only effectively year one or the current year that will get pulled in. If you are working on a client that has multiple years, you may need to create a copy of the XPA file, one for say 2013 and one for 2014, if you're preparing both tax returns at once. Next, we need to ensure that all accounts are in their correct tag sets. Okay, data import, the data import feature doesn't look at account ranges, it doesn't look at the account classifications, it only looks at the tag sets. So in the situation that we mentioned before, where you may have a custom chart or an amended chart, the Austax tag sets that we've packaged out of the box may not apply correctly. If that's the case, you need to run your filtered trial balance report and review what is in each tag set, not just the no tag set options, but anything that isn't where it should be, because the way that the tag set looks is the way that the information is going to be imported into tax. Our next note here is uh, our templates are not the rule of law. Austax tag sets can be modified at a client level without affecting the master. So we can edit Oz, we can edit our tag sets at a client level or at a template level. If we edit the tag sets at a client level, it will only affect that client. If we edit the tag sets at a template level, it will affect all files going forward that are created using that template. Okay, so if you have a client that is using a non-standard chart for whatever reason, and the Austax tag set doesn't apply, you do have the option at that point to actually change the tag sets and make sure that all the accounts in your client's chart are in their correct tag set to be imported. The final note is while XPA balances can be updated, this is not done automatically. Okay, so just because we've set the link with our XPA file doesn't mean that every time we update XPA, the new data will automatically go into advanced tax. This is a one-touch process, it is not an automatic process. So once you're happy that your XPA file is final, then you will be able to go in and synchronize and update with the latest information. You need to remember to actually perform that synchronization manually. Okay, it is a one-touch process, not an automatic process. Okay, well that comes to the end of our formal presentation. Um, I see that we've had some questions coming through that Tanya has been um, answering, so thank you very much for that, Tanya. Um, are there any other questions at the moment um, from anyone else?
Okay, so as we've noted before, this uh, session will be available online. It will be available, the recording will be available online together with the slide set. Um, and we'll also make any other training materials or release materials available. Just leave a few more moments just to see if anyone has any final questions. Okay, thank you very much for your attention everyone. Thank you very much uh, for coming to this webinar. Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime or following this session, please don't hesitate to contact your APS contacts. Um, other than that, have enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. Actually, we do have one more, one more, um, one more question. Does it import the asset data or integrated data if they're different? Uh, the answer there is it imports what is on the general ledger. Okay, so whatever is showing up in your trial balance um, as the actual account balance, that is what is going to get imported into advanced tax. Okay, I think that was actually the final question. Thanks very much for your attention again, guys, and have a great day.